What's up, everybody? The Inquisitor Mamba here, back with another podcast. I've been away for a couple days. I've been super busy, but I'm here to talk to you guys about some sports, what I love to do. Let's get right to it. Last night's game uh, in the MLB, we had the Houston Astros and the, and the New York Yankees go up and at it. Um, their first time since the sign stealing scandal, uh, the Yankees ended up winning seven to three. But there's one thing that really caught my eye from uh, from that game, and that was the um, uh, Jose Altuve was uh, getting getting chants at him saying "F Altuve" when the Yankees fans got to the stadium. It felt like a playoff atmosphere. It was uh, it was a pretty good game. The Yankees, like I said, ended up winning seven to three. Lemayhew and Stanton blew it open uh, late in that game. Actually, John Carlos Stanton's on a four game hitting streak. Hats off to him. And the Yankees are uh, starting to roll. Um, I know I said you know recently in the past couple episodes I was like Stanton, 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 Yankees, Yankees, Yankees. Are they going to do anything? They're they're hurt. They're banged up. They were five and ten to start the season, and now they're sixteen and fifteen. So. Now they're starting to roll, and they're waiting to get some uh, some players back from injury. Moving on to uh, to the Rockies. The Rockies ended up walking off last night. I thought it was pretty cool. I saw because they scored six runs in one of the innings to to close to close it out. So uh, that's kind of one thing that really caught my eye from uh, from that game. But um, back to that Yankees uh, that Yankees Astros game. Um, Rudnett Odor, which you guys all know who that is, former Texas Rangers uh, player, now on the Yankees, uh, and uh, Jorge Maldonado uh, ended up uh, having a home plate uh, controversy thing. Both players ended up leaving the game. Um, I didn't, re- I didn't watch the game. Um, I was uh, actually in Miami last night. I was attending some business uh, stuff. But, anyways, I want to know what you guys think about that uh, Maldonado Odor uh, thing at the plate. If you guys uh, have any comments or concerns, let me know because I really want to know what you guys think about that. The last thing I'll talk about the MLB, how about Atlanta Braves pitcher last night uh, who Oscar Yanoa ended up hitting a grand salami for uh, for the Braves, ended up going 427 feet. So that was pretty cool. That was another thing on my MLB radar that I saw. Moving on to the NBA. A lot of you fans uh, turn, tune into this podcast to listen to the NBA. How about Mike Budenholzer on the uh, on the hot seat? Supposedly, from, uh, from recent speculation, he's on the hot seat. Um, I don't know why he'd be on the hot seat, um, as his record is uh, three hundred and seventy in two thousand two oh two hundred and six. 206. Excuse me. I can understand why he's on the hot seat, but then again, I don't because. Um, you know, the Bucs have made the playoffs the past couple of years, and I know they didn't make the finals. Obviously, last year was kind of an atrocious uh, situation with Giannis kind of folding against the Heat in that bubble, obviously, the, you know, when the, the beginning of the pandemic was going on in Orlando and all that. But it's just hard to uh, give up a guy like Budenholzer who's been, um, you know, taught by a guy like Greg Popovich. Um, you know, has learned a lot. He, you know, he didn't do the greatest with the Hawks, but he's learned a lot from Popovich. And I don't know where the Bucks would go in in the direction of moving on from him because I don't know what other coaches are really out there. If you ask me, I mean, I can understand if it was a guy like Luke Luke Walton who I'll bring, who I will bring up in a, a few minutes. But it just you know blows my mind that they would get rid of a guy like you know Budenholzer. That brings up my point actually. Terry Stotts um, is on the hot seat as well, which is weird because. He has a pretty solid record, you know, and they're in the West and, you know, they don't have a, a star studded team. Obviously they got Lillard, but you know, I, I think that's a, that's an inside thing. I think Lillard and McCollum and some of those guys are looking for a, a fresh face in there. You know, I don't really know, but, um, I think it'd be hard to fire Terry Stotts as well, because who are you going to go, who are you going to go to, who are you going to move on to? So that's my take on Budenholzer and, um, uh, Budenholzer and Terry, Terry Stotts, excuse me. But, um, those are uh, those are two uh, good head coaches. I think they're solid. Um, you know, I just don't know where they would go if they were going to leave uh, that direction. Um, that brings up my point exactly as well about coaches on the hot seat. There's, like I said, Terry Stotts just brought him up. Uh, his record's fi- um, excuse me, yeah, his record is a hundred and nope, sorry. Uh, Terry Stotts' record is five hundred eleven and four eighty five. So I mean, it's he's got a solid record. Um, I just don't see why you know they'd move on from him. But they've got the Pacers, uh, Bajor- uh, Nate Bajorkin. He's a new guy from the Raptors. He was an assistant coach for the uh, for the Raptors. He's uh, 126, 20, 126 and 74 lifetime. Um, 
as he's coached, uh, you know, with the Raptors and now he's coached for the Pacers. He's on the hot seat, which I don't really know how he would be on the hot seat because they don't really have a lot of talent outside of Sabonis. Uh, Miles Turner, you know, got hurt. I don't really see uh, where they would uh, go away from him. I mean, I, I don't think it's fair to remove him just quite yet. Oladipo, he, he got traded, um, but they don't have a lot of stars on that team, you know, so I think it'd be difficult to move on from a guy like him. Next one here, you guys all know who Luke Walton is, um, son of Bill Walton, former NBA player. Luke Walton played for the Lakers, um, went to, uh, I think he went to Arizona. If not, I'm wrong. If, if he did, he didn't. But anyways, um, coach for Golden State when Steve Kerr went out for a while, uh, as this assistant coach there, did coach the baby Lakers for quite some time with LeBron. So now he's now he's the Kings head coach and he's finally on the hot seat and his record's 172 and 229. Now that's something I can understand, but he is pretty good with the young guys like Buddy Heald, De'Aaron Fox, um, Tyrese Halliburton. Um, he did pretty good with with some of those younger Laker guys um, when they had when they had the uh, when they had the opportunity with him. But it's just I could see them moving on from a guy like him. But then again, I'm sure there'll be head coach vacancies available. I'm sure there'll be a Sixers or a Clippers or a Lakers, you know, assistant head coach. Maybe Jason Kidd will get a shot. I don't know. I mean, Steve Nash, you know, he got a shot with the Nets. So there could be a, in the NBA starting to shift to a lot of younger, younger coaches, as you see with Steve Nash, Monty Williams. Um, obviously Luke Walton's a young coach. Uh, there's a, there's a ton of young coaches. Teron Lou's very young. So like I said, there's a lot of young coaches. So I think the NBA is going in that, in that direction. Um, my last one is Scott Brooks. You know, I think he's an in-home guy. Um, he had a really good record with the thunder for, for years. Uh, obviously he had Durant, Abaka, Harden, Westbrook, you know, uh, and he had the, the, the Paul George, uh, and actually, no, excuse me, that was Billy Donovan. But I mean, he's a good coach. Um, I don't see the uh, Wizards moving on from him, especially right now. They've been they've uh, caught some fire. They're thirty and thirty five, so I just don't see they'll move on from him quite yet. But um, his record is five hundred seventeen and four eleven. And my uh, last couple things about the NBA: How about last night's parlay with Buddy Heald hitting five threes? Nets and Bucks. KD went off for four threes. No surprise there. Lonzo had five threes. That dude has been balling, folks. He had 33 last night for a career high. I'll talk briefly about him before I wrap up the NBA. Wiggins had four threes, and that was a parlay. Some guy bet six dollars to win 1.9k. It was, I think it was, yeah, 1.9k. And that's just another parlay. So hey, if you're looking to do a parlay on DraftKings or FanDuel, go right ahead because some of these guys are just cashing in on five dollar parlays to win two k. Hey, I'll take five dollars and win two thousand. Uh, two thousand dollars to go to the bahamas on a vacation for the weekend why not blow my money at the casino no i'm just kidding but hey pretty cool to see these parlays uh you know working out obviously there's not a lot that do but it's pretty cool to see this how about this three years ago today lebron james hit that uh bank shot against the baby raptors and ended up scoring 38 points i think it was yeah 38 14 of 26 seven uh rebounds six assists three steals Another monster performance from LBJ three years ago when he hit that bank shot um, uh, going against OG Ananobi on his left left side of the court. That was uh, that was a game that was a uh, pretty interesting game. It was game three of uh, of that uh, fi- uh, series against the Raptors, but nothing new for LeBron. Uh, obviously, he's out right now. I want to know what you guys think about LeBron's recent comments. Um, about the uh, play in because last year he came out and said, Oh, I think, uh, I think teams, you know, should be have a play in. And now he came out recently when he got hurt again and he said, I don't think, uh, I think the playoff play in is, is dumb. I have my own thoughts on that. Um, but if you guys want to, uh, ask me questions about that, I'd be more than happy to, uh, to hop on, you know, hop on a zoom or hop on a call and, and you know, share my thoughts on that. But I got to uh, get on to some more things before I, um, wrap up the NBA. Like I said, Lonzo Ball at 33 points last night. He went off for seven threes. And I think somebody's going to pay this guy. I mean, you sit back and think Lonzo got hurt uh, recently and he's been hurt, you know, for most of his career and he hasn't been a great shooter, but now he's really starting getting confident. I mean, I saw a clip from him last night. I think it was on House of Highlights where he, he pulled up with a mid-range jumper, what one leg jumper st- stood back and, and nailed it. You usually uh, haven't seen that from Lonzo recent, and his brother had a beautiful pass last night as he came back uh, recently from injury. But um, my last thing on the NBA, and this is probably the highlight of the NBA, John Morant came out and said he is a top five point guard. I really want to know what your guys' thoughts on that because I saw a lot of comments on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, all the above, and they were saying that t- John Morant is not a top five point guard. I'm going to give you his numbers uh, throughout his career. 
Uh, Career-wise, he's averaged 18.4 points per game. He's only played, I think it's been, this is, might be his third season or second season. I think it's his second season, but anyways, don't quote me on that. And this season, he's 19.1 points per game. Now, he had a, a, you know, a, a little bit of an injury in the beginning of the season, you know, midway through, and uh, now he's starting to roll. They're in the play-in as well. But like I said, I really want to know what your guys' thoughts are. If he is a top five point guard, I'm not going to – I don't think – actually, excuse me, I don't think he's a top five point guard. I think that's hard to say. You got Curry, you got Luka, you know, Harden plays the uh, the point guard. You got, I mean, Kyrie. I mean, there's so many good guards. Chris Paul is a great point guard. Obviously, he's in the MVP conversation. Um, like I said, a couple – uh recently on the podcast Chris Paul is in the MVP conversation don't sleep on him but I don't think John Morant is a uh, top five point guard I want to know what you guys think let me know below in the comments I'm going to post this this section of uh, my tick of my podcast on TikTok and see what you guys think if he is a top five point guard I don't think he is but that's the wrap-up of the NBA moving on to the NFL we've got a quick couple things here to start off how about Aaron Rodgers this guy's been in the media the past couple of days, even since you know last week from the draft. Uh, the Niners were linked to him. The Broncos were linked to him. The Raiders have been linked to him. And Green Bay came out and, and was absolutely furious to hear that these teams want him. Well, maybe if you give him a receiver at Green Bay, maybe if you would make the guy happy. I'm not a huge fan of Aaron Rodgers. I think he's a complete diva. I think he's been screwed by the NFL you know, for quite some time you know, with you know calls and this and that. But, hey, that's the way the nature of the game. He's... Uh, but but yeah, I think it's interesting to see that Rodgers is really coming out now and saying, actually, he calls Packers GM Brian uh, Gutekunst, uh similar to Jerry Krause, the Bulls GM, uh, in a group text. I think that's pretty interesting, honestly. That's just Rodgers playing behind the scenes like a diva, and I really, really think he was affected by the Jordan Love thing. I think when they drafted Jordan Love and they didn't draft a wide receiver, I think he was absolutely furious. And they didn't draft a receiver just uh, this recent past draft last week. They ended up drafting Eric, uh, drafting Eric Stokes from Georgia, who runs like a four-two-five, I think something around there. But the the real pick they wanted was Rashad Bateman. They didn't get him. The Ravens ended up taking that uh, pick. Um, but yeah, the Packers uh, are extremely furious about teams wanting Rodgers. Like I said. You know, maybe maybe give the guy a receiver. You know, maybe he needs some extra help. I mean, that O line was in shambles last year in the NFC Championship game against the Bucks. But what do you guys think? Do you think Rodgers would be uh, a good fit on the Raiders? Obviously, it's, I mean, Rodgers could be a good fit anywhere. But like, you know, the Raiders with John Gruden, the Broncos with uh, uh, Vic Fangio. I don't think I don't know. I mean, Rodgers could probably go anywhere, but I think he stays in Green Bay. I think he gives it another year. He is 37, 38 years old. He's got a couple more years left in the tank. I think he stays. I think he uh, rides it out with Devonta Adams for one more year uh, and sees uh, where this season can take them. I mean, they could definitely win the Super Bowl. I got Aaron freaking Rodgers, the bad man. How about this? Dak Prescott came out and said, I'm, I'm ready to play now. I could play. Uh, Dak obviously got hurt with that compound fracture last year. Uh, against the Giants. I think it was week five. I think Dak will be fine, honestly. I don't really think uh, it'd be, it, I mean, obviously it's a you know major injury, but he's a young quarterback. He's a big, strong guy. I think I think he'll be fine. Um, but yeah, I th- like I said, Dak will be fine. How about this? 2021 is make or break for Jalen Hurts, I guess, as he's going to be named the starter or he's the guy in Philly. And you know, those Philly fans, they're brutal. I got some friends, uh, that are some Philly fans, and they they are the absolute worst. But hey, Hertz and uh, Devonte Smith get to be paired up once again and get to run it back and see uh, how uh, how it'll go with those two. I want to know what you guys think. Let me know in the comments. Do you think Devonte uh, Smith and Jalen Hurts are going to be around five to ten touchdowns this year? What do you think? Is Jalen Hurts going to you know blow it to Flacco, or is Flacco going to start? Are the Philadelphia Eagles just fooling us? Let me know in the comments what you guys think about that. Moving on, how about the Raiders signing Casey Hayward? I said it, folks. Somebody needed to sign Casey Hayward. Now you're going to be surprised by these numbers when I get when I get to them. Real, real, right here. Excuse me. He got signed for a one year, four million dollar deal. Uh, how about this? Like I said, somebody finally signed him. He had a uh, fourteen. Um, excuse me, uh, fourteen. Um, uh, whatever. Forty one tackles, eight uh, pass breakups, uh, one interception. And uh, he's 31 years old. So, I mean, he's older. Like I said, I think somebody would sign him. The Raiders are desperate. Their roster's not the greatest. I don't even think, no, they didn't even have a first-round pick this year. 
Actually, yeah, they did. They drafted the kid out of um, out of Tulsa, the linebacker. Don't really know a lot about him. But since 2017, Casey Hayward had a 92.3 grade by PFF. But recently, as of last year, he slipped bad and ended up with like a 59.5 grade. So that's where you're probably like, yeah, that's probably why Casey Hayward didn't get a lot of high value on the market. Um, but uh, but he allowed five touchdowns, so he's kind of slumping a little bit. You know, he had a good, pro, he had some good Pro Bowl seasons with the Chargers. Uh, in 2017, 2016, he had that one with the Packers. Him and Desmond King were leading the league. The, him, Gilmore, and K- Desmond King were leading the league in uh, PFF grade up until that uh, horrendous PFF grade last year. But it's a good thing I uh, brought up that the cornerback situation. How about Richard Sherman? He said this morning, I want to come back for the Niners. I would love to be back. Uh, I don't see why not. And he thinks Aaron Rodgers should go to the Washington football team. I'm not going to get too much into that. Um, I think I've wrapped up basically everything on the show. I covered the NBA with some uh, coaches and their hot starts. Um, I, co- I covered, you know, the MLB with the Altuve situation. The Yankees and the Astros actually played a night at seven o'clock. Luis Garcia versus Jordan Montgomery on the mound. Um, a little bit about John Morant. That's the highlight of the show. The John Morant top five point guard thing and the Aaron Rodgers headlines. Those are the two things you want to listen to in this podcast until next time. I want to say I'm signing off. Uh, This is on YouTube, Spotify, TikTok. I think we're on Apple now as Apple Podcasts as well. Um, And until next time, I will see you guys tomorrow. Peace.